Thanks for watching this Megadeth Symphony of Destruction guitar lesson. I decided to jump right in today, but remember to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more of your favorite songs broken down with full and accurate tab along with the solos even. Now let's get right into it. We have a two measure intro to start. So a very quick intro, it goes like this. Okay, and then we're into the verse. So uh, that's just one, three, one on the low string and put a palm mute on that and then go from an F to an E power chord. So first fret power chord of the low string to open E. Okay, and to break those E's up, I'll drop my fret hand fingers lightly across the strings and I even drop my pick hand to really deaden the strings and get a nice dead stop. Okay, so the intro. And then just repeat that F to E again. And remember, we've got some upbeats happening there too. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four. Okay, now we get into uh, the verse, which actually follows a four measure repeating riff, and that goes like this. Okay, so just more of the same. It's just a repeating four measure thing though. So we start off the same with that one, three, one. And then just F to E's, okay? And we play that three times through uh, respectively and then we get to the pre-chorus. Okay, so I think that you probably understand that riff. There's not a lot to it, right? Um, so let's move on to the pre-chorus riff. I'll give it a quick play and then we'll break it down. So a lot of repetition going on with this pre-chorus riff is really just one measure that repeats for most of the pre-chorus. And we start off with two palm muted E chugs and then a ring finger bar on the seventh fret of the A and the D. And then we're actually going to take that bar down chromatically to the sixth frets and the fifth and then chug an open E in between each. So E chug down to six and the E chug down to the fifth frets barred there on the A and the D. Okay, and then there's a brief half a beat dead stop there. And then a little quick hammer to, from five to seven on the D string, back to five, and then we can repeat. Okay, and we play that six times. And on the seventh time, we're gonna slide that the fifth fret bar down and then, okay, so then we do two more E chugs back up to the fifth fret on A to give it some good vibrato there too. And then we're gonna start on the sixth fret on the low E string and just hit every single fret on the way down. Six, five, four, three, two, one, open. And that open signifies the start of the chorus, right? So that seventh time. Okay, and then we're into the chorus. Okay, so that's the riff. And briefly before I slow it down for you and perform it with some scrolling tabs so that you can play it along with me at a slowed down pace. Um, I just want to talk about the timing because there's a lot of off beats going on, right? And that's the trickiest thing with this riff. It starts with a little pickup. Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and 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 right. So we're just nailing all the upbeats, the ends. Okay. Uh, so that's the biggest thing to be aware of with this riff. 
and to feel it properly you'll really need to get good at feeling those upbeats so now that we've done that let's play it uh slow down with some scrolling tab for you So there's the main rhythm guitar for the pre-chorus for you. And as mentioned, there is a harmony guitar in the pre-chorus, mixed really low, but it is there. So I'll give that a quick performance and then we'll break that down. Okay, so the way they play this live is slightly different than the album, but what I just played is the way it's found on the album. And all that we're doing is whenever there's that little hammer on the D string, uh, on that main rhythm guitar, that's the part that we're harmonizing. Okay, so the first time through that riff, the harmony guitar plays the same thing as the main rhythm. So they're the exact same, they just double each other. But starting on the second and third time through that riff, we're gonna go up to the fourth and fifth frets on the G string. And then what's the fourth, fifth, and sixth times through, we're gonna go up to five and six on the B string. And then that seventh time, it just doubles again. They do the same thing. Okay, so that's the way it is on the album. And just to quickly go over live, because you might watch them play it live and it's very slightly different. The only thing live is that you would just play twice in each location. So you double that main guitar twice at that first position on five and seven on the D string. Then you go up twice to four and five on the G string, twice up to five and six on the B string. So you just keep it nice and even, right? Two, two, and two, and there's your six repetitions, and then finish it off with the chromatic thing down the E string. And that's how they're playing it live. But there's the harmony part for you. And while we're at it, I'll just play it slow for you too, just in case you want to follow that one along. And then we'll talk about the chorus. Here we go. I really like the chorus riff. I think it's a lot of fun to play, but it also is probably the trickiest riff in the song. So we'll take it slow, we'll go through the notes, and then I'll show you picking and another tip here that'll help you play it. Um, but we're gonna start with this power chord on the seventh fret of the A string. It's an E power chord. So we have the open E, and then that E on the seventh fret of A, and B on the ninth fret of D. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start with that you know, the chorus starts with that open E ringing. And now we come up to the ninth fret on D and the seventh fret of A, just kind of arpeggiating that power chord. Hit that open E underneath it again, and then move down to the eighth fret on the D string. So you're going from your pinky to your second finger, and you're just going down those three strings again. So nice and slow. Now we're gonna move down to a D power chord, fifth fret, of A, and we're gonna do that same thing. Where we start with the power chord, and then chromatically move that note down one to our second finger, okay? And you hold that out a little bit longer than the other ones. And then, you're gonna to have to do a little third finger roll down the seventh frets of A and E. Slide it come down to a C power chord on the third fret of A, and we're gonna do that same trick. 
Okay, where we go from our pinky and arpeggiate that power chord with the low E underneath. And then down to your second finger on the fourth fret. And then we come back up to D and arpeggiate down that power chord again. And then we have a little sliding arpeggio figure. So slide from five to four on D, five on A, and then seven on the E string. You want to get a nice little vibrato on that bottom note there. Okay, so the first half of the chorus so far. Okay, now the second half starts off the same. Right there, we're just going to change, come up to a D power chord and just chug it. One and two and three, slide. And we're going to get back into our verse that way, okay? So the second half of the chorus, once you have the first half, then the second half is pretty much right there, right? It's just that last measure that's changing. Okay, so let's talk about picking pattern then. He starts with a downstroke, and then he actually uses upstrokes on these arpeggios with a downstroke on those E's again. Right, so all, the D and the A are always upstrokes and the E string, anything that falls on the E is the downs and anything on the D and the A's are up, okay? Now another thing that gets that riff sounding right is that we want everything ringing together, but we don't want to put zero palm mute on or else it gets really muddy. Right, that's, that's muddy, we don't want that. So the trick is to put an ever so slight palm mute on that low E string and then just kind of ring everything together. You gotta to find that happy medium where it's not a, a, a really solid palm mute and there's no palm mute on there at all. It's kind of like a medium, a slight palm mute, right? You just wanna control that low E string so that it's not you know, overpowering everything by ringing low under there. So it might take a little practice for you to get that right, but then you don't wanna heavily palm mute it either, else it'll sound really staccato and disconnected like. Right, you don't want that sort of a sound either. Okay, so now that we've broken the chorus down, I'll play it for you nice and slow and we'll move on, here we go. So I probably don't even have to break this down for you because it's really just the pre-chorus riff minus the little hammer pull on the fifth and seventh fret there on the D string. It just, you know, is giving the solo a little more space to do its thing. So we're just walking down with those double stops on the seventh, sixth, and fifth frets on the A and D. Half a beat pause and just keep doing that. You do that a total of 16 times. And the last time, just get out of it straight to that F E E, right? So that's all there is to that. And that is all the rhythm parts. And uh, let's just jump right into the solo. Here we go.
So Marty Friedman ripped out a really cool solo on this one. Really like it a lot. It's got a lot of arpeggio stuff going on, which I'll explain as we get there. And this first lick, this first phrase, has a lot of half-step bends too. So the our first thing goes like this. Okay, so we're sliding into the ninth fret, which is E on G, and we're gonna do that a total of six times. Slide in and hit it four times. Two, three, four. And slide in again, hit it twice. One, two. Okay, then we're gonna slide down to the ninth fret, down to nine on D, and then come up to the sixth fret on G again and bend it a half step. Don't be afraid to get a little vibrato on that too, right? So once again, that first little lick, Now we've got this. Okay, so what it is is a very quick unison bend. We're gonna fret the fifth fret on B and the seventh fret on G. And we're gonna bend that seventh fret up to match the pitch E so that we basically are hearing a unison pitch, right? And then we're gonna slide down to the third fret on G but bend that a half a step. Right? Friedman likes to do this sort of thing where he's bending outside the scale and does a half step bend to get back in. Um, is, you know, it's got that very cacophony sound, right? Him and Jason Becker did that sort of playing a lot. They do that sort of thing. Um, so, there's a nice vibrato on that on the recording too. And then we go put a palm mute on this, open G, second fret on the G string, open G. And then. So you grab the second fret on G, yank it up a half step, release, and pull it back up slow. And then do it fast again. Okay, so that's open G. And then we go second fret on D. Okay, and it's kind of a bounce. I see a lot of tabs saying that there's an open D palm mute in there, right? But uh, it's not, it's just like a... Uh, a, a little bounce and it, it has a little, you know, adds a little bit to it when you got it just right. Okay, so let's play that whole phrase nice and slow for you. Okay, now we get into some arpeggio playing. Okay, now I'll just quickly explain what we're gonna do. Hopefully this opens up the doors for this lick not to be quite so complicated because at first glance it can be like, you know, little a little complex, right? But what, all that we're really doing is taking an A minor arpeggio up the neck and adding an F sharp into that as well. So the sixth degree, a raised sixth. So you could kind of almost see it as an A Dorian type thing. If we take this A minor arpeggio, Right, very sweet pick friendly one. But some of you might recognize that as being in the C minor shape, right? If you know the cage system, it's A minor in the C minor shape. If not, that's okay. It's just a very good arpeggio to know. But what we're gonna do, we start with that in that position, but we're gonna add an F sharp on the 11th fret of G. So we actually have this arpeggio. Okay, and then that's what we sequence. Okay, that's the start of the lick. We're just playing that arpeggio, but kind of sequencing it in a hemiolic type of fashion. So we slide in to the 10th fret on D and then nine and 11 on G and repeat that. There's a little hammer there from nine to 11 the second time. And then we move up to the top two strings, the B and the E string in that arpeggio shape. Okay, and that's just 10 on B eight and 12 on the E string and repeat that, right? Picking I find is very important. Now, I'm not saying that the picking that I'm suggesting is 100% right. I'm sure there's other ways that you could, uh, you know, devise to get through this, but this is what works for me. Um, so if you're really struggling with the lick, 
and not quite sure what to do, I would definitely suggest following my picking and seeing if that works for you. But it might take a while to get, and it is an economy sweet picking kind of style, right? Um, I just found that alternate picking wasn't working for me. It was, it was sloppy, very hard to get it tight, but this picking seemed to make it flow for me. So, uh, <laughs> Just practice those picking strokes nice and slow. Okay, so that's the first part of the lick. Okay, then we move up to another position. And again, we're just playing with an A minor arpeggio. Remember, that's all that we're really doing is moving A minor arpeggios up the neck. So now we've got this basic A minor shape. All right, another sweet picking friendly one. But we're gonna include the F sharp there again on the 14th fret of the E string. So. We've got that little arpeggio shape that we can play with. So we're gonna slide into 14 on the high string and then do a quick pull off to 12 down to 13 on B. Okay, back up to 12 on the high string, 14 again, and then really quick pull off here between 17, 14 and 12 on the high string. Come back down to 13 on B and back up to 12 on E. Okay, and that's all we have to do in that position. Now, we get up into our final A minor arpeggio position up at the uh, 17th and 20th frets. Um, so we've got this uh, A minor arpeggio here. Okay, that shape, and again, from the cage system, you might recognize it as A minor in the E minor shape, right? Um, just the top three strings of that arpeggio. Uh, and again, we're gonna add the F sharp in, which is going to be at the 19th fret of the B string. So now we're going to have this add six arpeggio. Okay, and that's what we're playing with. So slide into the 20th fret on the high string, and then we're going to pick 17 and 20 to 17 pull off. And then we go 19, 17 on B, come down to 17 on the G string. Give it a little vibrato before sliding it and we'll be into our next lick, okay? Okay, so now that we've played that, I'll put it together nice and slow for you. It goes like this. So just the timing of that lick can be a little bit tricky. Um, the, you know, some of the notes are held longer than others. So it's not a lick that you can count and it's not even a lick that can be transcribed 100% correctly. You really just have to get a feel for that. So I would recommend listening to the original recording over and over and over until you can nail that. Okay, now we get into our next section. Let's just talk about those two measures. Um, it's really based around the E minor pentatonic. Um, we're going 12 to 10, pull off on the B string, down to 12 on G, back up to 10 on B. And we do that twice. And then we go 15 to 10, pull off on the B string, to 12 on the G string, do that twice. And then 14 to 10, and that's the end of the measure. Right? Um, it's got a very hemiolic feel again. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, right? Um, it's not just, one, you know, dead on the beat where you're hitting every time. And then we just move that up a string set to the E and the B and we play the same frets, the same pattern. Okay, now after that, We get into G major arpeggios up and down the neck. Okay, so we start in this. Uh, I view this as G major in the A major shape. We're really just taking the top two strings of this. That's where we start. Um, so it's 15 to 10 pull off on the high string, down to 12 on B, back up to 10 on the high string. Then we do a big jump up to this G major arpeggio, which is basically the G and the E shape, just the top two strings of that. So 19 to 15, pull off on the high string, down to 15 on the B string, and back up to 15 on the high string. Right, so we got these two arpeggios so far. And now we go really the top two strings of G major in the C shape up here at the 22nd fret, that, that G would be the root of that. Um, so we're going 22nd to 19, pull off on the high string, 
d down to 20 on B, back up to 19. Okay, so we've got those three. Now we're coming down through the G shapes again. So we're basically using G in the E shape here again, but we're gonna relocate that pitch that's up there on the 15th fret to the 20th fret of the B string. And then we're gonna pull off to 15, so on B, 20 to 15 pull off, down to 16 on G, and 17 on D. And then, okay, so I see this as being directly out of the G in the G shape right here. 15 to 12 pull off on the B string and then 12 and 12 on G and D. Then we finish it off. Okay, we hit 14 on D, and then 12, 11, 12, slide it back and forth. And then jump up to the G string, 14, bend it up a whole step. Okay, so that can be uh, quite a handful. Uh, and I'll just play it nice and slow for you, and then I'll just give you a couple tips here. So here it goes. Okay, so when you're jumping around like that, you have to make very accurate leaps, right? So really you need to be thinking ahead. So when you're on this that G arpeggio, be thinking ahead in your mind to the next G arpeggio and see, see your pinky hitting the B. So it's very helpful if you understand the notes that are in the G arpeggio, G, B, and D. That's the root third fifth and we're starting each it's their inversions really, right? We're starting each G major arpeggio on a different note, climbing up the fretboard. So see that in your mind, you're starting G with your pinky on G. And as you're doing this, be thinking, okay, my next note is B. And then that will help you land on that B with your pinky. And then as you're playing this, be thinking D is my next note that my pinky has to hit. Right? And then same on the way down. Now on the way down, we're hitting a G and then a D. So understand those notes too. Be thinking, okay, on the way down, I need to hit a, a G and then a D, right? And to keep that nice and clean, your hand kind of has to collapse a little bit. As you're playing that, you want your hand to kind of collapse so that the, D, the pinky hits that G and then your pinky wants to hit that D, right? So that'll take a little bit of work, just kind of thinking ahead um, and playing really, really slow and really being disciplined and making sure you're not making a ton of mistakes every time you're playing it. Slow it down, play it perfectly every time until that's in your muscle memory and until you can nail those jumps, right? Okay, so let's move on. The next lick is this one. Okay, since the bass guitar is playing C at this point, I view this as being based around a C dominant seven arpeggio. Um, but finger wise, something that you might be really familiar with is the E minor pentatonic slash blues scale is really just can be seen as something right out of that, except we're adding the C on the 13th fret of the B string. But uh, anyways, let's get right into it, not to bore you with the details. We start off like this. All right, that's the first two beats. We'll take this two beats at a time. So 15 to 12, pull off on the G string and slide into that. Then down to 14 on D, back up to 12 on G. Now hit 15 on G again, up to the B string, 12, and then 13 to 12, pull off. Okay, so there's our first two beats. Now we uh, will add on the next two beats. Okay, so that's, 12 or 15 to 12 pull off on the G again, down to 14 on D, up to 12 and 15 on G, hammer from 12 to 13 on B, and 12 on the high string. Okay, so we've got this. Okay, now we have this. Okay, 13 to 12 pull off on the B string, 15 to 12 pull off on the G string. 14 on D. And now we're gonna go 12, and then 
four on that's on G and then 14 to 15 hammer. Okay, now, so let's put that together so far. Now we just have to do this. Okay, so to finish this off, we go 12 and 12 on the B and the E. 15 to 12 pull off on the B. 15, 14 on G. And then pull off to 12. Down to 14 on D. 13 on the G string, bend a half step. Okay, that's the lick. Here it is nice and slow. Okay, again, you might want to follow my picking suggestions for that lick if you're having trouble figuring a pattern out that works for you. Okay, now we get into our last lick of the solo, and it's a pretty quick one. Uh, it's based off of this very common rock lick. Right, a little repeating pattern, but he's got a little trick in here. Um, I find that a lot of tabs miss this nuance in it, but it is important to be able to play it accurately like he does um, and it actually makes it easier to play fast uh, and it's almost there's some economy almost sweet picking in this lick too to get it just how he plays it uh, so we start off like i'll just play the lick okay so we start off with a little sweep on the b and the e's They're, they are separated so you want to do a little bit of a sweep motion like an economy picking Okay, then you come to the B string, 15 to 12, pull off, and bend the 15th fret. So, so far we have... Okay, then... We have that little rock repeating thing to, to get, to kick this off. 12 on the high string, 15 to 12, pull off on the B. And bend 14 on G. Okay, then we're going to do that one more time. 12 on the high string, 15 to 12, pull off on the B string. And bend 14 on G. But this time, when we bend that 14th fret, we're gonna keep our pick moving, and we do a sweep pick through the 12th frets again uh, on the uh, top two strings on B and E. And then you can just re come down through the strings, 15 to 12 pull off, and then 14th fret, uh, fret bend on that G string again, and again, keep it going. So you do that little sweep motion through the strings again, and come down to the 15 and 12 pull off on the B string. Okay, so, so far we have this. Okay, now to wrap it up, he doesn't come back down to the 14th fret on G. He just goes, sweeps through those 12th frets on the B and the E again. And then, and finishes with an oblique bend where we fret the 15th fret on B and the 14th fret on G. And then, we bend the G string. And it's okay if you bar the 17th fret on the two high strings so that you get that high string ringing in there too, okay? Or just two, the G and the B is fine too. Okay, so that whole lick nice and slow for you goes like this. Okay, and since it's a pretty short solo, I'll just play the whole thing nice and slow all at once for you. Here it goes. And there is the entire breakdown of Symphony of Destruction. It's an awesome tune, a lot of fun to play, and that ripping solo should keep you busy for a while. Hopefully it answered all your questions, and hopefully some of that theory didn't lose you and it really opened your eyes to what's going on there too and will help you create your own solos in the future. So practice hard, and I'll see you soon.